Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry. And there are quite a few caves in Texas. And there's about a dozen or so of the large caverns where they give tours. And I think probably the best one to go to is Natural Bridge Caverns, which is just a little ways northeast of San Antonio. Because this one has so much more than just their caverns and their tour. There are a lot, many other things here to do, and I'm going to show you some of those things today. And also, take a cavern tour. They have what they call a canopy challenge. And I'll go outside and show you what that looks like. As you can see here, it's got a zip line and several other different challenges you do to get up through this fixture that they have. They also have a cave tour that takes, I think, about three hours. And this is one where you actually rappel down into the cave and do a lot of crawling around and spelunking for the real adventurous type. We've got two cavern tours, one called the Discovery and one called the Hidden Passages, and I'm going to do both of those today. They also have what they call Discovery Village Mining Company, which is the trading post, and you can do some panning for gold or whatever they have. And then they have a life-size maze that you can go into and act like a rat <laughs> going through a maze trying to find your way to the exit. This is a more close-up picture they have of the maze. This is the canopy challenge that you see several people on there. And you can barely see that wire going across. There is a zip line. And here is the Discovery Village Trading Post, which is part of that mining company. And they have a huge windmill. This is what the maze looks like. I'm up on an observation deck where you can look down on the people trying to find their way around the maze. By the way, the landscaping around here is really marvelous. It's a huge property and they take care of the property very well. Nice, nice place to spend the day. This is the trail that goes down to the cave entrance right there and this is the natural bridge there's the top of the bridge right there maybe kind of hard to see here but when i go down to it i'll show you what it looks like from underneath This is Texas' largest sluish. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I'm going to have to look it up. Now, local farmers and ranchers have known about the hole in the ground here since the early 1900s, but it wasn't all the way until 1960 when Miss Clara Wolfley Strideman, she was the landowner back then, allowed four students from St. Mary's University to come on inside and check out and see if she had anything under the ground. 
On March 27th, they found this 120-foot-long crawlway, and through that, they were able to find the two miles of cavern underground that we now call the Discovery Caverns. So today we're going to be walking the first half mile of what they actually found that day. Now, it took a little while for development to start. It's uh, about three years later in 1963, and then we been, began giving tours on July 3rd, 1964. Now, just about a month later after we had opened, there was actually a dedication ceremony. The late governor, John B. Connolly, came down here, and he actually dedicated this lower plaque right over here to the discoverers and the developers of the cavern. And, all right, so today we're going to walk down... And we're going to go down 180 feet beneath the natural bridge. So that's basically like going down 18 stories. So y'all are going to go down 18 floors, and then y'all are going to come back up 18 floors. That's a lot. Yeah. It's pretty warm inside. I mean, I know it's hot outside, but it's going to be even so warm inside at a constant 70 degrees, plus the relative humidity of 99%. So the cavern's going to be close to 80 to 85 degrees. So definitely think about that as well. So walking up and down 18 flights, walking almost a mile, plus all the uh, uh, humidity in the cavern does make this tour mildly strenuous. All right, guys, so we're going to make our way through St. Mary's Hall here. Now, there's no handrails for this section, so just make sure that you're not touching any of the walls for me as we're coming down. But you guys can just continue to follow me through here. Now, sometimes people will roll all the way up or all the way down, in which case we get these two columns right here. So basically, these formations just touch both ends of the cavern. What happens here is when the water droplet enters the cavern, only the outer layer of that water droplet is going to harden and going to crystallize. So basically, as the droplets enter the cavern drip by drip by drip, slowly several rings begin to form onto, onto the ceiling, and eventually they grow all the way down and creates a thin tube. So these ones are hollow. <laughs> The room here. I do have two benches here on the other side of myself, so if you guys want to come over and take a sit on those, I do want to make sure that we're all kind of scooching on inside the room here because it's, like I said, it's just kind of this weird oblonging shape. So I just want to make sure that we're all kind of scooched in over on either side of myself, and we have holes along it. So I think we're going to do something down here that got you know, those holes. Make it look how it's going to work. And you know what? This hole is going to have a lot of blood. That one looks like a landlord. I'm going to get the rest. So they did their education out of the land market. Next to that, we have one of our biggest formations. This one we call the East Zone. So here we have grown up school, two objects, a pack of the So you just head right over to that black spot on the floor, and then Molly will take a picture. Is it three guys? Is it just you sure? Are you with someone? Yeah. It comes out into our largest room, which we call the Hall of the Mountain Kings. Now, Hall of the Mountain Kings is not only a large room on the floor, it's also the largest showroom in Texas. So this room here is 100 feet tall, 100 feet wide, and 350 feet long. Yeah. And right now, 135 feet on the ground. So this room down here, you probably notice there's a big old hole in the ceiling. 
a little different than all the other birds that we have looking at today. Basically, 20 million years ago, when all these scientists to the cavern goes. So like I said, we walked half a mile today. I know it feels like more, but it was actually only half a mile so far. And the cavern does go for another mile and a half past where we're at right now. So these are called soda shots. So technically these are a type of stalactite just because they go from the ceiling down, but they're a little bit more special because these are actually hollow in the middle like a soda straw. So water can travel through these instead of around them like a regular stalactite. Here different from the ones you saw in there. Yeah, these are a lot longer. So in our discovery caverns, those average about six or seven inches, but in here, they're usually about three or four feet. Wow. Now, Now, right next door to the Natural Bridge Caverns is this other attraction called the Natural Bridge Wildlife Ranch African Safari Texas Style. <laughs> and it's a separate operation. I'm not going to be going into it today, but I just wanted to let you know that it's here. So this could actually be a two-day event. One day doing all the things at the Natural Bridge Caverns property and then the next day doing the wildlife park. So that's something you might want to do if you got a couple days. So I hope you've enjoyed the tour folks. Good day.